Hi, I'm Lisa Bardot, and today I'm gonna to be teaching you the fundamentals of drawing a scene, and I'll show you how I developed and drew this nature scene. Welcome to Scene School. Scene School is a series of prompts and tutorials to help you learn how to draw scenes and develop your style one piece at a time. If you're new to using Procreate, I highly recommend checking out my intro to Procreate tutorial so you can learn all the basics. And if you wanna learn more about drawing and illustration, and of course using Procreate, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future tutorials. Over the course of scene school, we're going to be drawing four different scenes. A nature scene, a rural scene, an interior scene, and an urban scene. The prompts are designed to focus on a single scene for an entire week, but you are of course welcome to join in and progress at your own pace. In this series, you'll be building a scene in two parts. The first is a visual brainstorm of the components of your scene. And the second step is putting it all together, starting with a sketch and then of course coloring and finishing it. In this video, we're gonna be discussing how to draw a nature scene. The first thing you want to do is decide what kind of nature scene you want to draw. So you'll want to choose a climate or environment. So some ideas are a desert scene, oceanside, forest, mountains, a lake, jungle, etc. It can be whatever you want. Just choose something that is exciting or meaningful to you. I'm doing a scene inspired by Lake Tahoe, a place my family likes to go. So it'll be like a mountain lake scene. Part one, visual brainstorm. The first step is to do studies on each of the components of the scene. First, you'll decide what you want to draw. Then you'll have to learn how to draw it. And finally, you also wanna figure out how you want to draw it, what your style is going to be. So the components of our nature scene are going to be plants and trees, water features, animals and creatures, land formations, and clouds and sky. I'm gonna take you through how I did a visual brainstorm for each of these components for my Lake Tahoe scene. So the first step is to work on your plants and trees. So you wanna look up what kind of plants and trees exist in your particular environment, and then you wanna figure out how you want to draw them. So there's a lot of pine trees that are in Lake Tahoe, so I decided to look up pictures of pine trees and then just do some sketches from observation, um, just kinda like trying to simplify it a little bit, and also I studied things like the pine needles and pine cones and things like that. And then from there, I colored some of these sketches so I could kind of start to get an idea of how I wanted the style to be, what kind of brushes I wanted to use, and just overall how I wanted those trees to look. And I also decided to look up another tree, which was the aspen tree, specifically aspens in the fall because they're yellow and they're super pretty. Um, so I wanted to include that in my scene as well. So I look up pictures of those, did some sketches, and then experimented with using different brushes in a way that was um, kind of what, what the look I wanted to go for. And finally, I knew I'd want to include some smaller plants along the ground and things like that. So I looked up even more pictures and kind of drew a bunch of different little sketches and then colored those as well. So the next component of the scene was the water features. And for my scene, I decided that I really wanted to capture the way that the water kind of goes from this beautiful aqua blue to this like bright deep cobalt. So I was experimenting with that and I also liked the way that you could see the rocks kind of like halfway submerged in water. So I was experimenting with that as well. And I kind of came up with something I really liked. Um, starting to work on the rocks a little bit, but I was gonna work on those a little bit more in the days to come but I'm really happy with how that turned out. All right, the next component was animals and creatures. So of course it's a natural environment, we're gonna have some animals in it. So I looked up some animals that are native to that region and I made a whole list of all the different animals and then I decided to focus on just a few for my, um, for my visual brainstorm study. So here are all of my animal sketches. I tried to do a sketch from observation and then kind of stylize it and simplify it a little bit more. Here I was experimenting with different brushes to use to do the chipmunk, which I actually, <laughs> that one actually took me the longest to do that little chipmunk. Um, but once I kind of figured that out, it was easy to use that same style to draw the bear and the chickadee and the two fish that I picked, which was a salmon and a trout. 
Then I worked on the land formations of the area. And I think it's important not to start with land formations on day one because they can be kind of boring or um, a little intimidating. Um, so it's good to cut. That's why we started with like the trees and the animals and stuff like that. That was a little more fun. Um, but this is very, very important when it comes to a nature scene is doing the land formation. So the two things that I wanted to focus on was the mountain ranges that you can see like at the edge of the lake. And then more close up was is those kind of um, like piles of boulders that you see where they're partially submerged in the water. Um, so the mountains I struggled with a bit, but um, I kind of just kind of ended up on a style that that I like after experimenting a lot with brushes and different things. And then I worked on the boulders and kind of sketched out some different shapes and the way they piled up on each other. And I had a lot of fun actually <laughs> painting these boulders. It was really you, you would be surprised. I wouldn't have guessed that painting rocks is fun, but I actually had a lot of fun with this. So I'm really happy with the style. Uh, in this bottom image here. And of course, I this whole time I've been making notes about what kind of brushes that I use so that I can remember when I go to work on the final piece. And the last prompt uh, before we get started on putting everything together is clouds and sky. Uh, we don't want to neglect the sky when it comes to our nature scene. And so you want to decide like what time of day you're going to do it, what weather it might be that might affect the clouds in the sky. So I just decided it would be bright sunny day, lots of fun, beautiful puffy clouds in the sky. And that's what I focused my study on for um, the visual brainstorm step. Here are my sketches where I was um, drawing from observation and then kind of simplifying it. And I discovered that for me, it was easy to make the clouds in this kind of 3D shape that to me kind of looks like a whale's body. And so that helped me visualize it a little bit more. And then um, I was able to use that to kind of find my way of drawing clouds that looked kind of realistic, but still um, were stylized and uh, kind of painterly. And I also made some notes about what brushes I use and um, what kind of methods and things that I use those brushes to do. Part two, put it all together. So now it's time to put everything together. And there's a particular order that I recommend to build your scene. And that is, first, put in the land formations, then the water features, then your plants and trees, then your clouds and sky, and finally your animals and creatures. It's kind of starting with the biggest things and working down to the smaller, kind of more fine details. All right, so first I'm gonna draw my land formations. I'm gonna draw my horizon line, which is kind of where the edge of the lake is, where it meets those mountains. And I'm just drawing some wavy lines to kind of denote with basic, basic shapes where the mountains are gonna go. I'm also going to include kind of um, a little piece of land that sticks out into the lake. And then I'm also gonna put some land in the foreground. Once I've done that using really basic shapes, I'm gonna come back in and draw with more detail those land formations. So I'm gonna come over to the mountains and just go over them with more kind of scraggly lines to kind of show the, the different irregular textures of those mountains. I'm also gonna draw a little bit of the snow on top of the mountains. And those look pretty good, so I'm gonna move on to those boulder rock formations that are gonna be on this little piece of land that sticks out into the lake. So I'm just kind of using what I had practiced on the day that I did land formations, but um, kind of just putting them sort of randomly. I'm not like copying them exactly from my sketch. I'm just putting them wherever I want. That kind of works for this composition. And I'm just gonna move this up a little bit just to give me some room to, to add some stuff to that foreground there, there down at the bottom. I'm also gonna add a few stones and boulders along the foreground. And then the next step is to add in your water feature. Now, most of my composition is the lake, it's the water. So there's not really a lot I need to do here, but I am gonna just make some lines um, just showing where the, the color of the water might change from that aqua to that like deep, deep blue. And then I'll just add a few little lines to kind of show the texture of the water. All right, with the water being done, it's time to move on and add in the trees and plants. 
So I wanted to do some pine trees that are kind of growing out of this uh, rocky boulder area. So I'm just gonna draw a couple tree trunks and then draw some branches just really quickly. I'm not gonna be very detailed with my sketch. I'm just trying to get the basic shapes down. And of course I wanna also include some of those beautiful yellow aspen trees. So I'm gonna put those here on the other side as a part of the foreground. So they're gonna go from the top to bottom, covering the whole top to bottom of the canvas. I'm just drawing the trunks and then adding in some puffy shapes for the tree, like foliage, and then um, kind of showing where the branches are as well. And down here on the bottom of the foreground, I thought that's where I could include some of those smaller plants. So I'm just gonna draw some sketches of those, kind of basically exactly how I'd done them in my visual brainstorm because I spent the time practicing those, I know how to draw them now, so I can just add them into this scene. Next, we're gonna go to the skies and add in those elements. So for me, it's gonna be these beautiful puffy clouds. So I'm just using what, again, what I had learned earlier, what I had learned through my study, um, these kind of whale <laughs> shapes uh, are gonna be my clouds. So I just drew those in really lightly, and then I'm gonna go over them and add like the puffy kind of all those shapes over the top. One thing that you'll notice about the clouds is that I make them bigger up towards the top of the canvas and smaller closer to the mountains. And this gives the illusion of some perspective, which um, we'll talk more about perspective maybe in another video. We're not focusing too much on it at this point, but um, those would be the, the clouds that are further away. They'd be really small, so off in the distance. All right, so clouds are looking good. And the final step, the final component we haven't done yet, because it's kind of the smaller details, is to add the animals and creatures. So I definitely want to put a bear in here, and I thought it might be fun to have the bear kind of peeking out, like stepping into the water and peeking into it. So I'm just gonna draw it here, kind of partially behind these rocks. And he's kind of like peering into the water kind of adjust it, redraw some parts to get it. When you're working on your sketch, you wanna get your sketch kind of pretty close to how you want the final thing to be. And I'll also erase some of the rocks that might kind of interfere visually with where this bear is and move some of these little rocks around. And I wanted to also include some fish in this illustration. Uh, so I thought it might be fun to have the fish kind of staring back at the bear. Um, <laughs> Maybe the bear's about to eat it. Maybe they're just curious about each other. Who knows? <laughs> put another fish over here. And then for the bird, I thought I could put it over here on one of these branches of the trees. I also maybe want to include the chipmunk. I'm not 100% sure about it, but I can put it right here, kind of in front of this little rock that's on this shoreline. He's just like hiding behind that rock, chewing on whatever he's chewing on there. All right, so this is my completed sketch. As you can see, it was just a matter of spending the time figuring out what I wanna draw, how I wanna draw it, and then going through and just putting it together piece by piece, starting with the biggest things and then kind of working your way down to the smaller things. Now it's time to color and finish the entire scene. I'm gonna really speed this up because I think I clocked about three hours on this. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly go through it and kind of point out some of the things that I did and some of the brushes that I used. For my scene, I used brushes from my gouache paint box brush set. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description. All right, so the first thing that I wanna color in because it's the biggest thing on the entire composition is the water. So I'm using this aqua color kind of here closer to the shore and then this deep blue as it kind of goes off into the distance and blending those together where they meet. And then the next thing I'm gonna work on is the rocks. So um, I'm filling in each of these boulders and wherever they overlap, I'm putting them onto a different layer. That way I can manipulate them separately. So I'm just starting out with my fine grain liner and then I will use my jumbo dappled brush to add some texture uh, to the side of each of these boulders. The light, I imagine, is coming from the left, so that's why that side is gonna be lighter. And then I'll draw where the water overlaps the rocks and add a little bit of shadow at the underside of each of the rocks as well. 
Now I'm just coming back in with my dotty gouache grain brush, which has this really fun texture. It's like perfect for rocks. Um, and then I'm adding some even darker shading uh, along the sides of each of these rocks. I'm just using it to give it some more overall texture. I love it when you can use brushes, just like add a stroke of a brush and it adds like a lot of awesome texture. And then finally, I'm adding these like kind of horizontal lines that show up when the water rises and, and lowers and you kind of see it on the rocks, that's what that's supposed to be. So I'm using the bristle painter brush to put those on. And to really sell it that this is water, we wanna add some like ripples around the rocks. So I'm using my alabaster liner brush for, to add some really light water kind of shiny marks. And then I'm coming in with my detail liner to add some like really bright white um, highlights. All right, that's pretty much it for the rocks. So I'm gonna move on to the foreground here. So I'm just painting in this kind of like dirty sandy color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw all these plants. And I, again, I'm just using the same methods that I had experimented with uh, when I was drawing plants and trees on the first day, just using those same ideas and using them on this on this image. For this particular plant, um, I used the painty angled brush, and it was perfect because it does the brush strokes at lots of different angles, especially when you rotate your canvas. So it was perfect for drawing these kind of random leaves on the ends of these br branches. I come in and add a little bit of shadows. I think I'm using the crispy gouache grain to add all the texture on the dirt. Worked really well for that. And then I'm gonna use the same the same way that I had done the boulders in the water. I'm gonna do in these boulders here on the shoreline as well. All right, now I'm going to add these aspen trees, which are gonna be on a layer above everything else because they are the most forefront, they're in the front of everything else. So I'm drawing the trunks of the trees and then I'm using the gouache wash brush to add these yellow splotches to kind of give the impression of tree foliage. I didn't wanna add all the individual leaves of a tree that was just one, too much work and also a little too detailed that you know I don't want it that detailed in this painting so but I will come in with that painty angled brush to add some individual leaves just to kind of give it the impression uh, that you can see some leaves all right so I'm gonna work on the mountains next and I'm gonna add a sky behind them uh, that kind of like fades from like a darker blue to like a white almost down at the bottom and one thing to note about mountains uh, is that you want to employ a little bit of atmospheric perspective. And this just means that things that are farther away uh, are lighter in color and they're also less saturated in color. So that's why the mountains that are behind the other mountains are a little bit lighter in color. And I'm just uh, using my painty round brush to add a little bit of shading to the sides of the mountains. I'm kind of switching it up from what I had done in my study based on kind of how my work progressed over the week and I kind of like changed it a little bit because that's what you do. <laughs> you learn and you do it different. So the brush that I'm using for the snow is the thick sticky brush and it's really textured um, and it's not quite opaque so it kind of does the snow. It's really good to use for this snow I found. Then I'm also coming in with a more solid brush to add in a few highlights and some like more solid kind of detail-oriented <laughs> shadows. I'll add a line here to represent the actual shoreline, and then I'll get to work on the clouds. So for the clouds, I used that thick, sticky brush that I mentioned, um, because again, it's really, really textured, and it's really nice to make this kind of fluffy cloud texture. Uh, so I colored in the clouds, and then I kind of colored in the shape of a smaller cloud with a darker, a light, light blue, and then I shaded the bottom of the clouds as well. The sun would be above the clouds, so if you observe clouds, you'll notice that there's always kind of like that shadowy thing <laughs> happening at the bottom of the clouds. And this will get me part of the way there with making these clouds look realistic, but what I found that really makes them look very realistic or, I don't know, very puffy, is adding these really bright, um, highlights along the side. So I'm just kind of like drawing in these like cloud shapes along the clouds and then blending the edge of that brush stroke in towards the middle of the cloud, kind of like fade it out. And then I get this really cool like puffy cloud look. 
It's really awesome. It was a really fun <laughs> discovery to make as I was working on these studies. All right, so I need to add in these pine trees next. I already did the aspen, now it's time for the pine. So I'm using my Gritty Tilt Liner, which is a really textured line brush to draw the trunks and the bark on the trees. And then I'm using another favorite brush, Dry Supreme, which has this awesome texture uh, that I really, really love. And I'm using that to do all the branches and then just kind of adding some, I don't know, subtle shading. I didn't want to get super realistic with these trees. I just kind of wanted to, again, give the impression of the texture that they are and a little bit of the shading as well. All right, time to move on to the animals. I'm gonna work on the bear, and I'm just coloring it in using my painty round brush, um, all in one solid color, and then I'm kind of adding shading on top of that. I added little fur strokes along the edge to give him some texture, and I believe I'm just using that same brush to kind of just add shading in and add fur texture um, to the whole bear. And since he's stepping into the water, I do want to kind of add the water over his foot the same way that I had done over the rocks and adding those ripples around his foot as well. And I decided to make these fish the trout that I had practiced drawing, um, but much more simple because they're so small, I don't need to go into as much detail as I did on my studies. Um, so I'm just adding a little bit of dark shading at the top and some yellow shading along his belly and the eye and... Just doing it, but in a much kind of simpler way than I'd practiced. And the way I'm getting this kind of underwater look is by putting a layer above the fish, setting it to multiply for the blend mode, and then making it a clipping mask. And then I use that aqua color and just paint over the top of it. And then adding some like white ripply marks will really sell it that the fish is underwater. And then I have one more fish to do in the same way. So kind of using those same techniques I had in the other fish. And I wanna make sure that this fish also looks like it's underwater. I had the other fish had his fins kind of poking out of the water, but this one's gonna be all the way under the water. And making sure to add shadow underneath the fish and then a shadow on the ground, which would be underwater. Now I need to make sure I add uh, even more like water texture and ripples all over the entire scene. So that's what you see me doing here. And then I'm gonna add in our cute little chickadee. Again, the chickadee is really small, so it does not have to be as detailed as I had done in my study. Uh, I could just do a really simple uh, version of it, but that study helped me know like where the coloring of the chickadee is and everything like that. And I decided not to do the chipmunk. I think the scene is great as it is and doesn't need that extra element. So if I ever need to draw a chipmunk another time though, I'll know how to do it. <laughs> All right, so this is my final Lake Tahoe nature scene. Drawing a scene can be a really daunting and overwhelming task, so I hope this process gives you a better idea of how you can approach it. I can tell you that I never would have been able to draw this final scene if I hadn't gone through the process of doing the visual brainstorms for each of the components to figure it all out. I can't wait to see what kind of scenes you create using what you've learned from me today. You can learn more about Scene School on my website. I'll put a link in the description. Scene School is a part of the Making Art Everyday Challenge, a free series of daily drawing prompts, tutorials, motivation, and a supportive community, all with the goal of helping you overcome your creative fears and establish a daily art making practice. Learn more at bardobrush.com slash join MAE. If you're posting artwork to Instagram made with my brushes or tutorials, I would love to see it. Use the hashtag Bardo Brush. And for this tutorial, don't forget to use the hashtag Scene School. Thanks and happy art making. If you like this video, please subscribe for more awesome tutorials and check out one of my other videos. Have a great day.